and I mix too little. But I do all kinds of non technical things. Hey, welcome to my little channel. I'm not at the boat right now, as you can see. But in this video, I'm doing one of the three big jobs for the boat. And that is I'm hauling it out, inspecting the bottom, uh, cleaning off virtually all the old paint anti-foul, and reapplying a new barrier coat and new hard anti-foul. This is um, part one, essentially, of three main components to readying my boat for distance sailing. And part one is making sure that the, the hull is uh, prepped and sound. Uh, part two will be the engine that'll be coming up here in a few months. And then part three will be the rigging and the sails. Uh, and there'll be lots of little uh, steps in between there. But I'm trying to share this with family and friends and I'm glad you're joining us. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks a lot. There are like four layers of bottom paint, probably five because they took one off with the pressure wash. And then you've got this, uh, this black harder piece right here, which actually col color, um, which actually covered the boot stripe uh, up here, if you can see that. Um, and then there's this light blue, and then there's this uh, lighter green, and then darker green, and then red, and then the gel coat. I think that's four. I can't even count right now. Um, but this uh, this black stuff up here, black or brown or whatever you can see it, kind of covering up the red of the boot stripe. Um, that's tough. That's that's hard to get off. And then uh, what happens is if I try to sand off the the blue, you know, just start and start sanding with the blue on there, um, it uh, it just gums up the 80 grit paper I'm using uh, immediately like within within a 30 seconds it's gummed up and you have to clean it and it's it, so I found though that if I get down to the the darker green the dull green uh, and the red then that comes off pretty quick and it doesn't come up the paper so I'm scraping it uh, with this little tiny scraper here and um, there are parts of it like up here uh, by the boot stripe and or to the top here that's really tough um, it's a lot, but uh, once I get down toward the keel and stuff, it comes off uh, a lot more quickly. For the most part, the hull looks really good. Um, there are some dings in the paint, I think. Um, I don't think it's blistering, but there are some, some things like that. Um, which probably was blistering, although it's not really blistering, it's just nothing was there to protect the fiberglass. So that's right down to the fiberglass. So um, I'll probably end up grinding that out uh, and refilling it with some uh, thickened epoxy. Well, this is uh, my first time um, doing any kind of bottom work at all. No idea what I'm doing except for what I've read and researched here and there. You know, it's the unknown. 
uh, in, in the time it takes to figure out how to fix something that you haven't anticipated or run into before. But, um, but the point of this whole process really is to learn. Um, I mean, I want a new bottom um, here, but, um, but I'm not terribly concerned if it's absolutely pristine because I understand that my knowledge of the whole process is very limited and it's a learning, uh, it's an education for me. I did some sanding here and the problem I'm having is if I lay the sander flat, it doesn't seem to cut paint. If I tip it on its side at all, it starts gouging. Um, this whole area right here is just, you can't obviously see it, but it's like rippled. And it's just not, I didn't, I'm not prepared to have to, walk around and fare the whole thing so I don't know um, I'm really just kind of bummed about that um, yeah it just doesn't seem to want to cut if it just laid flat you have to angle it and as soon as it gets to the gel coat the, the gel coats so soft it just digs and it okay anyway so that's uh, um, it's later in the day and I'm a little worn out but here's the the rudder and there's some question about its integrity and I look at the top of this here the, the cutaway you can see that um, this is all like bare fiberglass like I I don't I don't know if it was repaired at one point or not but I'm going to look at that a little bit more, but um, uh, there's something to note anyways. I've pretty much scraped the whole of one half at this point. Um, what's concerning on top of that is I actually find scraping more enjoyable than sanding. But even the scraper, you know, you can see. The scraper leaves all these gouges here too at times so I don't know you know you think it's gonna go some way or another but uh, I just didn't know it would be such a problem with with just gouging and digging and uh, so that's got me a little bit low tonight but I'm gonna go ahead and clean up and, and get out of here oh it's a little after 6 a.m. I don't know, maybe 20 after, I suppose. Um, it's still dark. I'm going to get up and get at it. I learned something valuable yesterday. One of the local uh, local hands came around and said that um, the red uh, was likely uh, an older barrier coat, epoxy barrier coat, and probably didn't have to take that off. And that... Uh, all the cupping is I just I really have to keep that um, that disc sander flat and yes it takes a long time to take those coats off when it is flat but I won't get the cupping um, that uh, that I've been improperly um, gouging the surface of the boat so I'm glad I stopped at that but uh, I'm gonna continue with the the scraper today this process is gonna probably take me longer than I expected and uh, and that's okay. I, I have I have time still. Uh, this is just day number two. It's the first full day, <clears throat> so we'll see how that goes. Uh, so I was told that this um, this red is actually a barrier paint, an old barrier coat, and so I, and because it's epoxy based, I really don't need to get rid of it. But I need to get need to get rid of all the green, um, which is okay because scraping is not too bad with the green. this anode off these anodes oh well, I got it off this thing popped so loud so furiously I thought for sure I broke my uh, yard neighbor's tool down in the hole I go And do well I don't know basically I want this I want to replace this 
So I want to replace this. In order to do that, I have to walk that prop out, that shaft out. And in order to do that, I have to take it out of, I have to take it the, sh the prop out of here, which means I have to undo these, which means that this whole thing is probably gonna, this is not gonna survive. Well, I can't do anything with the prop shaft, I think, unless and until I remove the engine, which I plan to do, but not this trip. Uh, it's just the reality of it. So I am on to seacock maintenance to give my break, give myself a break from the scraping. And we'll start with the most accessible seacock just to learn how that's done. And the head. And it's relatively straightforward. There's a jam nut right here. I've already loosened that. I'm just working it off slowly so I don't I don't gall it with all the uh, I probably just need to get a wire brush and clean that up a little bit. Take that off, take this uh, this nut off, and then with that this um, the interior body will slide out and then I'll lap it uh, with some lapping compound that I got from Spartan Marine and then grease it. Well, I ended up tapping the end of that uh, that spindle with the end of the screwdriver, and then that loosened up right here. Let's see. Like that. I'm not sure if I noticed much difference. I am really hoping that. Um, I mean, I think they'll be fine in the water, but I really hope I don't notice anything weird. Well, I've got. Um, Three of the four seacocks serviced. It's interesting because they all kind of behave differently when putting them back together. Um, but uh, the fourth one seems to be working fine and, and it's by the engine, so I'm gonna leave it for now. Anyways, I think those will be okay. One, I couldn't really snug down. It, it feels loose, but the instructions simply say, you know, tighten it so that it doesn't close which is means the handle is going to fall down with the vibration of the engine and it might do that it's right now it's another one right next to the engine so i'll keep an eye on that but it's just a matter of tightening it up and i just it's in a awkward space and you can't really get a good uh good purchase uh good leverage on that uh on the nut to close it down but um they didn't say it would leak they just said just do it until you don't think it's gonna rattle down So it's about 7.30 on Saturday. So this is my fourth full day here. And I'm getting there. Um, I do have concerns about uh, about getting it done. Uh, we've got two days of rain coming uh, in a few days. And um, that's pretty much where I'm gonna wanna be painting. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a little concerning. Uh, also, um, I guess I didn't realize, but I'm scraping. Scraping is the easiest way to take all the old paint off. Um, and as you can imagine, that's pretty, that's pretty laborious. Okay, it's a Saturday. I am breaking for lunch. Okay, I'm leaving the red on. And so I've got most of it done with the stern and the rudder on both sides. But, uh, yeah, not too bad. Okay, well, most of the scraping is done. I've got beneath the keel to do. And, of course, the uh, beneath the pads. I'll have to move the pads to do that. But... Right now we're gonna go to the store to get some epoxy and uh, accoutrements to fill in some of these uh, problem areas that we have here.
got this uh, this brown scum up here and I want to take that off so I can raise the, the water line just a little bit and uh, you see it's nice and clean here. I was recommended using just some toilet bowl cleaner. Think it needs mixing? Hey, not that you can tell, but I got the second coat of second barrier, second layer of barrier coat put on. The video is not going to show all the major imperfections. Well, probably won't. I don't know if it will or not. But. So I got basically a day off tomorrow because it's going to be raining. Uh, starting in the morning, probably till the early afternoon. And so I I won't be doing much. Uh, might service the Seacock, but uh, maybe just, uh, yeah, just taking it easy. And then some water. Oh yeah, it's already set up. So I guess I'm not worried about this water dripping down it. So getting back to this rudder issue, you know, like I said, uh, in, I don't know which video, but it seemed like it was offset from the tiller a few degrees. So if I centered the tiller uh, <coughs> perfectly, this, uh, the rudder actually would be off um, a little bit. Um, it's it's not centered right now, but but it would be offset to port just uh, just a little bit back here. I looked at the tiller. The tiller is centered on the shaft with the key, um, so it wasn't a problem of the tiller being offset. So therefore, I was concerned that there was a problem with the rudder being offset on the shaft. But what I found is that the rudder comes down. Uh, the rudder shaft comes down. But it makes this this um, L this um, this dog leg here before it keeps on going down to the shoe, and that dog leg essentially prevents the rudder from skewing uh, if it was just a straight shaft all the way down, um, and then and then wings coming off it. I would thought that the wings came off the shaft. And, uh, and then those had shifted, they broke in their welds and, and so the, the rudder was offset. But with that, with that crook um, in the opening for the propeller, uh, I don't think that's possible. So I'm heartened by that. Um, it does seem that the, as I mentioned earlier, that the rudder was rebuilt. Uh, and so maybe they kind of goofed it up um, at that point. I'm not sure how exactly, but <clears throat> I suppose that's a possibility. It's a day off for me. I'm gonna get in my car get some breakfast and then I am going to head out on a little sightseeing tour. U.S. defense battery installation. I'm here with Pat Corcoran, and he's giving us a little tour of this uh, locomotive, locomotive restoration, restoration activity here in Astoria, Oregon. In some ways the passion of a particular individual, but also a constellation of friends, most of whom, unlike me, have skills and experience in really large scale uh, machinery. Completely taken apart, and what we're seeing now is really back to getting pretty close to done. so much for your oh, thing, though. Yeah, showing us around, it's yeah, real nice. No, my pleasure. It's not exactly a nautical theme. No, well, that's okay, that's okay. It's the I kind mean, of things you find uh, on shore at port, right? Chico's absolutely right. It's, the, it's these little things that, oh, that come along the way that you wouldn't expect. Do either of you know what a foamer is? A foamer? Yeah. Well, I'm back at it for the last push. Uh, Got two coats of the barrier paint on, and uh, today I'll go ahead and scuff it up with some 80 grit sandpaper, 
because it's been, I don't know, now it's been uh, 36 hours or something since I put the last coats, um, last full coats on the bottom. And then once I do that, I'll put the first coat of any foul on that's a hard coat, hard paint from Pettit. And then I've got to wait something like five, six hours or something. And I can put the second coat on without doing anything more. And once that's done, uh, I'm going to let it tack up. And I hope I can get these guys to move. I hope I'll be able to move the stands so I can do at least one coat under where the stands are. So I can put a second coat on tomorrow morning in those spots before I splash. The epoxy barrier coat is now spin sanded. Lots of noise in the yard. Um, and I wiped it down. This is not a how-to whatever. I, um, I'm going to go ahead and put a first layer of the AV file on now. in the water. No leaking from the, uh, the seacocks that I serviced and I haven't looked at the uh, edge line but he said it looked really good. Well you can't see from here. Oh there you go. That's a little bit more of an indication. So you see I raised it up. They wanted it out of the water. Just me, or is that a lot faster? Okay, I'm in. Went relatively smooth. I think I bashed. I think I bashed that same area though up here in these these things right here. Something here, but uh, other than that, I'm pretty 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 straightforward. Let's have a look at that water line. Yeah, that water line looks good. Hey, thanks for coming along. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.